You are looking live at the NASDAQ here, a daily chart on a day where the NASDAQ um, fell 118 points or 0.76% and closed at 15,509. Now, the NASDAQ is not the leading index because it's not trading at new highs like the S&P and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But I did point out that this index was trading at 6% above its um, 50 SMA. And when it does that, it starts getting a little cranky. There you can see um, it's 5.9% um, above. And then on Monday, it got to um, 6.1. And we know from the past rallies that once it gets up there, um, that there it was 9, 10, 9. And then it got up to uh, 8. And then pulled back to the 50. And that's that's what it does when it starts getting a 6% or above. I mean, it could go 7, 8, or 9, but eventually it's going to pull back. And it looks like we're going to get a little bit of a pullback here. Today was the start of it. Um, down three quarters of a point. Tomorrow looks to you know open a little weaker with the um, with the data points this afternoon. Now tomorrow we got the Fed announcement, and uh, later on in the week we have Apple, Amazon, and Meta reporting. So um, you know a pullback. Like I said, right now the index is five point one percent above this rising rising fifty simple moving average, and that's the important point: is these moving averages are all rising. So um, even if they pull back and these these uh, moving averages are still rising, I mean, the index is trending higher. It's when it slices below uh, is then we run into problems. We'll worry about that you know, later. I mean, it still looks good. A pullback is healthy. And what happens in a pullback is we get to look for stocks showing relative strength. We see where stocks find support, where buyers step in, where stocks start to bounce. So there's, you know, it's really informative. And educational to watch the market um, when it pulls back. So I did mention the S and P. I wasn't going to show it, but I've got to. Yeah, it closed yesterday at an all time high and pulled back just you know itty bitty fractional um, today. And we'll see what happens tomorrow. And then the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, um, yeah, closed it. Uh, it was up 133 points today. Closed at an all time high. We'll see what happens tomorrow with, like I said, the new data points that. Um, I talked about earlier, I was discussing this uh, Russell and the reason why the Russell is weaker, of course, is because not just the um, the tenure, but every time a stock starts growing and the stronger stocks like an L for an SMCI, they take them out of this index. <laughs> so it's stuck with all the laggards and the stronger stocks growing and, and having larger uh, market caps, they go into, you know, a bigger index. So anyway, the Russell just kind of struggling here, but you know, it's up this week and it was down these four weeks, pulled back to moving averages and now bouncing it. It looks fine to me. Apple, they report later in the week. Um, <laughs> Apple's, this thing, is, you know, if I owned it, this thing would be driving me crazy. It sliced its uh, 50, pulled back to the 200, found support, ran back through it and now sliced it again. I mean, this thing is a roller coaster, but like I said, they're going to report earnings on February 1, which is Thursday afternoon. And then, We'll have more information about um, that stock. Amazon is also going to report Thursday. A um, little pullback after hours, you know, one and a half percent. I don't know. I wouldn't get too excited about it. They're going to report. And we just got to listen to what they have to say. I mean, these things are um, meta and Amazon are well above their uh, moving averages. This one's 2.8% uh, above the 21. So, uh, you know, just trending higher. Like I said, as long as those... <laughs> Those lines, those moving averages are moving higher and you're holding it um, and the stock's going higher, the averages are going higher, then, you know, you're making money, you're doing well. Um, Meta hit the 400, then got rejected, you know, after hours, it's down a little bit. But um, we'll see what happens later on in the week when they report. So we've got Apple, Amazon, Meta reporting, Microsoft, Google reported after the bell, and then NVIDIA uh down after hours i mean it was up today on the uh, report from smci you could see just you know a little blip on the screen here just very tight trading range here um down a little bit after hours but we're just gonna have to wait and see like i say where where they um find support might be 600 uh the 10 ema is slightly above 600 yeah going up five bucks a day or more 
So we'll just have to wait and see uh, tomorrow where they find support, where buyers step in. I doubt NVIDIA is going too far. Um, I'm going to get to a couple of the, um, let me see, I'm going to go straight to the uh, semiconductor names first. This is Marvell set up in the base. Um, yeah, just kind of an inside week so far. It's up, you know, one percent down after hours. Uh, I'll get to that in a little bit, but you know, just trading kind of flat here with uh, lower volume. You can see the, the lighter volume. They don't have earnings for another month. AVGO coming out of this uh, ascending base pattern now pull back. Uh, still above its 10 EMA. It's the 1% above the 10 and just down slightly after hours. So we'll just have to see how these things trade tomorrow. I did want to point out San Mina just had a move that cannot be ignored. 28% uh, move with 1,000% above average daily volume. Just a massive move as they reported strong earnings last night. Or, I don't know, they pre-announced is what they did, I think. Anyway, I... Uh, yeah. I think they pre-announced that's what the deal was. And anyway, SMCI, which has been on, you know, a real heater here after breaking out from that 357, uh, uh, you know, standard buy point there on uh, January 19th, you know, made this like flag type pattern, ran up today at 554 at the open and just sold off all day. Uh, pulled back to 501, looks like it might, um, you know, eclipse that tomorrow, but it does have a... Um, a gap to fill that 495.72. So perhaps it'll fill that gap tomorrow. But this thing has been a juggernaut. And uh, I could just look at the monthly. And uh, if, God darn it, Market Smith, don't do this to me. Jeez. Anyway, okay, we're not going to look at the monthly. Mm, this is frustrating. All right, I'm going to move on. I'm going to go to the home builders today because um, Pulte Homes reported earnings this morning or yeah this morning and they were strong and it was up and it made a new high and then pulled back you know and with you know kind of the market weakness but it did make a new high there of a 110.75 uh looks pretty good you know it's just made that like shelf type pattern uh builders first source kind of the same thing um you know forming this little shelf uh, respecting its moving averages, just surfing higher. I like this. It has a buy point and on our ready list. So another one that I do like. DR Horton is the largest of these. Did not have a good response to earnings. Undercut the 50. Now today closed right at it. Um, so and just another one to watch. The home builders, if we get some rotation out of um, tech, like I suspect we might, then home builders would be one to watch. And also... The um, oil and gas stocks would definitely be uh, some to watch. This is Marathon. They reported this morning. I had it on our ready list after the report, and it kind of started a little timid. But as the day wore on, buyers came in. This thing went up to like 170. You could see that little, little you know, nothing at the beginning. And then all of a sudden, buyers stepped in, and this thing really ramped from like 160 to 170. That's a nice, uh, sharp move. Um, so I'm going to have to take that off the ready list. That thing is in profit-taking land already. Um, another one is VIST. Uh, this is a uh, oil and gas international exploration. And you can see the double bottom base pattern just kind of trading tight and sideways here down fractionally today. So definitely one to watch. You know, look at this low volume pullback for um, Vista Energy. And then we had Weatherford which uh, was slammed today, 12% on the news that Saudi Aramco is going to hold back some of their infrastructure expenditures. So that affects the uh, field services and the equipment stock. So Weatherford got slammed today. Look at the volume there. And people are just saying, I want out. I want out of this thing. That one was also on our ready list. So um, man, when you get slammed like that, you just, I don't know, for me, I'm out, but um you know, I didn't own it, but if I did, I'd be out. And this is Tidewater, which is above the 50. And that's totally different from uh, Weatherford, which sliced its 50. I don't know. You can see the difference there. If it makes any difference to you, if you're a long-term holder, you just hold it. Or if you're a trader, I mean, I, I just cannot hold below that line right there. Anyway, Weatherford, uh, you know, Tidewater, they got slammed today. But there could be a rotation into oil and gas, some of the refiners and exploration stocks. So... 
we're just going to have to monitor that. The drug stocks I like could be a rotation into these stocks as well. Novo Nordis is on our ready list. These guys report in the morning. Um, I can't imagine they would say anything but you know good things. Um, it, it's all about their manufacturing ability to keep up with the demand. So how's the supply versus the demand? And they're just going to continue to work on that. And so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Lily is going to move with that data point from Novo Nordisk. And this one's still in a base and close to a buy point. Uh, Amgen made a new high today. These larger uh, cap um, biotech or drug stocks are doing performing much better now. You can see this one broke out of a base on uh, January 2nd, and it's just been trending higher and getting support at the 10 EMA there. So Amgen looks beautiful. Merck, we've had this on our ready list. They report uh, Thursday as well. Thursday is going to be a busy day, but if I take a look at the weekly chart, you can see that nice cup uh, pattern with the three weeks tight now, uh, you know, emerging from its base. So we'll have to see what Merck says on uh, Thursday. Uh, any other ones that I'm going to show? Oh, yeah, ALP. And this one has been up with volume recently. Big move here. And also EYPTI point uh, made a new high yesterday and just kind of pulled back a little bit today. You know, 3%. Doesn't look like much. That's a you know, three, three and a quarter percent move. Anyway, I'm going to move on to other stocks that uh, could see some rotation that uh, look strong. This is Fix. This is one that I, I really like. It performs well. It's just a real quiet stock, um, just emerging from a flat base today, up 4.3%, made a new high. Um, that one is on our ready list. So is Carrier, and this one pulled back to its 50, just biding time here. They report um, Tuesday, I believe. The 6th is Tuesday. Yeah. And then MOD, and this one is, uh, you know, respecting its moving averages after the breakout, just trending higher. That one looks good. The retail could see some, uh, you know, Abercrombie and Fitch. This one is, you know, thing of beauty for a trend trader, just surfing its moving averages quietly. Nobody talks about that one. Chipotle Mexican Grill. Um, yeah, I was going to put this one on our ready list this week, but I didn't. And I kind of regret not doing it, but it, it's showing well. I'm not going to do it now because it's just kind of extended, but congrats to the longs there. Um uh, Domino's Pizza, another one that just, uh, you know, since the breakout, writing its moving averages higher. We've traded at an all-time high today for a Domino's Pizza. Okay, let me see here. Oh, Elf. Elf got an upgrade today, or um, Baird initiated coverage was a 185 um, price target. Elf was up 1.3% uh, today, so Elf is definitely a strong stock. Um I like the weekly chart. They're going to report earnings on February 6th, which is next Tuesday as well. And just uh, this base pattern here, the three weeks tight, pullback, the three weeks tight. And now, you know, it's up 2% this week, but we're just going to have to wait and see what they have to say next week. Um, definitely a strong stock, though. All right, that's it for me today, except for I lied. I have one more thing, and that's the after hours action in uh, Microsoft and Google and AMD, and people are freaking out. But this is... Um, like I showed you, the NASDAQ was more than 6% above its um, 50, so it's due to pull back. And, you know, I don't know if these reports could have been stellar and miraculous, and it still probably would have pulled back, kind of a mechanical thing. Um, uh, let me see, the um, 10 EMA for uh, Microsoft tomorrow is going to be about 402, so we'll see if it can even pull back to its 10. But th what you're looking for is, you know, for it to pull back and then find support, then bounce higher. Um, so, you know, it's, these are, uh, this is healthy. Just observe. I mean, um, if you don't own, you want you want to see a pullback. If you own, it kind of stinks because you have to suffer through it. But this is the 142.68 here, the old buy point. So maybe it'll pull back to there. It's at 143 after hours. We're just going to have to wait and see. I don't read too much in after hours action and just, Wait and see if what the big boys do tomorrow. They step in and start buying these things. I doubt if they go down too much. Uh, AMD had a real strong run, you know, from 90 to 180, like a two-bagger, 184. And uh, I think they said 3.5 billion in a forward guide for data centers. I just went through it quickly, but it's down more than 5% after hours. 
once again, you know, pull back to 160 would be that 21 EMA, 161.25. Uh, yeah, 162. What was it yesterday on Monday there? 160, 161. Of course, so 162 and change tomorrow. We'll see if it bounces there off this magenta line. Just, uh, I don't know. It, when stocks have big runs like this, well, that's why I say you don't chase them because then you get hurt on these pullbacks, you know, and really when the pullbacks is when you should be, have, you know, taking advantage of these opportunities. Anyway, uh, some ripple effect, very could possibly have a ripple effect with Microsoft, Google, and AMD. Those are some pretty big companies. I mean, AMD's 277 billion and, uh, you know, Microsoft's 3 trillion and Google's over a trillion. So those are some big companies. Um, so they're gonna move the markets and maybe we get some pullbacks and some of the names on our right this um uh shift for payments doesn't look like it's doing much just an inside day today nothing after hours you know i didn't i don't know i wouldn't read too much in after hours you got to wait for data dog report earnings on the 13th uh, you know it's it's still near a buy point after hours you know 124 yeah, i don't know like i said i wouldn't read too much into these after hours moves people panic you know, especially retail folks, they freak out and they sell their shares and then they get bought up the next day and then they feel like knuckleheads. So don't do that. Um, just hold on to your shares and just observe. Um, if they slice the 50, then maybe you want to get rid of them with volume. But, you know, ESTC not doing anything bad here. I mean, the uh, 10 EMA is 119. So, you know, maybe it'll touch there tomorrow. We'll see. Maybe we'll even come down to the 21. That still looks like it's set up in that, you know, flat base with that 118.24 area. So gives you a second chance. Um, some people, you know, want to buy and didn't get in. Uh, Cloudflare still looks good by that old uh, buy point there. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, just going to have to wait and see. Like I say, this is price uh, discovery tomorrow. See where they find support. The FOMC meeting is going to, you know, rattle some cages. The uh, Apple, Meta, Amazon reports on Thursday is going to impact the market. So, you know, this is kind of technical trading. I'm going to go back to the NASDAQ here. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, going to pull back tomorrow. Uh, the 10 is uh, 15.375 today, 45, so $30. So call it, um, we'll call it about 15.4. Tomorrow, so it pulls back 109 points somewhere in there. Ah, eh, maybe it'll maybe it'll find support there. Maybe it'll bounce. Just gotta wait and see. Just don't uh, overreact. Um, use your uh, moving averages. Trade technically. Don't trade emotionally. Um, and when uh, during pullbacks, you know it's it, it's an opportunity to see where um, stocks are. Um, you know they're they're selling them and give, giving up. They're moving averages or they're supporting them at moving averages. So some stocks will fail and slice through their moving averages and others will find support and, and make new highs. So you just got to observe. Tomorrow will definitely be a day of observance. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you for watching at mcstockcharts.com. We never give up.